man, I'm gonna try this again. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard for me to get a live video. Uh, but I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, not nowhere. I'm in, in Hopkinsville, Kentucky at Edgar Casey's gravesite. Let me see if I can turn this around. Hopefully I've got that framed. This is just a quick video on my phone. Uh, Edgar Casey wrote a lot or, or talked a lot, I guess, about Atlantis. And a lot of his thinking about Atlantis is incorporated uh, into um, the kind of mishmash of ideas that go into the ancient lost civilization stuff today. Uh, and I have some friends on the fringe side who like Edgar Casey, who are proponents of his ideas. And I, I often wonder how they reconcile all of the things that he got very, very wrong with the few things in there that seem to be right. And I, it gives me a similar feeling when I read the, the apologists for theosophy you know, Blavatsky said this, this, and we couldn't possibly have known at the time, so she must have had some kind of insight. But what about all the things that she got wrong? So, um, anyway, that's a story for another video when I can think about it and edit it carefully. But I wanted to go over a few notes from last night. I read through part of Hugh Lynn Casey's book on Edgar Casey's thoughts about Atlantis. Hugh Lynn Casey was his eldest son, and he was writing in 1968. So he was trying to show that Casey's thoughts on Atlantis were not only internally consistent, but they were consistent with science and information at the time. So I just wanted to go through a few of those things real quick. And I'm sorry for the awkwardness, but you're just going to have to like look at the trees while I find my notes. Okay, just a few uh, interesting background things. Uh, Casey said that 50% of the people that he gave life readings to had incarnations in Atlantis, so big believer in reincarnation. Uh, he said drawings on ruins, mounds, and caves in northwestern New Mexico are 10 million years old, and this goes along with his general contention that humanity, as we know it, had been around for at least 10 million years. Uh, Hewlin Casey tries to support this with some um, examples of fossil evidence from the time. And some of these things I will have to follow up on. He's got jo uh, Dr. Johannes Herzler, a skeleton in an Italian cave, 10 million years old, and, and other things like that. Um, we have a much more complete fossil record now than we did in 1968. Uh, no physical anthropologist who studies this stuff will tell you that humanity is 10 million years old. There was nothing, nothing like anything like anatomically modern humans anywhere around 10 million years ago. There were a lot of apes in the Miocene. Um, we're still arguing over the last common ancestor between apes and humans, but after you get into the Australopithecines, uh, the fossil record is actually pretty extensive at this point. So uh, we know something about that, and it doesn't match this at all. Casey had a lot of very kind of old-fashioned racial thinking. Um, it's starting to rain, so I'm going to get underneath a tree. He had the five projections, which were the five races, white, black, red, brown, yellow. Uh, and to support this, of all people, Edgar, or sorry, uh, Hugh Lynn Casey quotes Carlton Kuhn, who is one of the most racist physical anthropologists you will find in the 20th century. He was notorious. Uh, he had some very old-fashioned racial thinking. He thought that humans... Uh, that races were subspecies and they had separated at the time of Homo erectus independently and therefore, you know, your white people had advanced farther and the blacks could not catch up so quickly and <laughs> Kuhn's cousin, uh, I'm not sure what this guy's name was, I forgot to write it down. He wrote a book called Race and Reason, A Yankee View in Support of Segregation during the Civil Rights Movement and Carlton Kuhn supported that and the Americans... Uh, Association of Physical Anthropology um, I, I don't know what the word is rejected it or whatever and I think Carlton Kuhn resigned from that I have to check over the details but that Race and Reason a Yankee View is available online so you should go read that and go read the thinking behind it and that's you know you can draw a line from that kind of stuff into the racial thinking that goes into Edgar Casey. so there you go uh, in terms of what he thought Atlantis was like, well, obviously it was around for a long time, 10 million years or so. It was high tech. There was um, high, there were high tech communications, radios and TVs, flying machines, radioactive forces. They had submarines, the Atlanteans, submarines. There were giants, 10 to 12 foot tall. Um, 
some interesting details he gave for evidence, you know, finding uh, an article in Science World, April 15th, 1966, Robert Menzies' columns with writing 6,000 feet under the water off Peru. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to go track that down. Uh, but I'm guessing that nothing ever came from it. He talked about, quote unquote, Cro-Magnon Man as refugees from Atlantis and that they were tall. I bet you that's where Robert Seffer got that idea, because that's one of the things that's in his terrible, terrible book. He talks about the Piri Reese map as evidence of having flying machines and all this technology that goes way back in knowledge of the entire globe. Um, he thought the Atlanteans migrated before the final destruction, that they were building civilization in Central America 28,000 to 10,000 years or so ago. So that would mean that all of those Mesoamerican pyramids and things like that, you know, there should be uh, a, a line of evidence that goes back that far. Um, what else we got? I think that's enough for now. There's plenty here. Um, an interesting guy. And I am kind of surprised by how many of these ancient lost civilization ideas seem to me to be directly drawn from Casey's writings and kind of transposed into today's speak. And I know that Graham Hancock would say that his Atlantis is not one that has all of this high tech in it, but you know, a lot of the pieces of evidence that he's using are the same and the thinking is really, really similar. So it is what it is. Anyway, that is my morning in Hopkinsville. I'm going to move on and I will see you back at regular order at some point in time soon. And hello and thank you to all the new subscribers. Have a good day.